Okay, so good morning, students. So what I was talking earlier is about, I was trying to give you a little recapitulation of what we learned during the uh, last class about monitoring and evaluation, certain techniques and programs that we learned. And today we are going to go ahead and learn about the last component in monitoring and evaluation that is learning. Learning also plays a very important role in monitoring and evaluation. Obviously, when the monitoring and evaluation, when it is done and when it's reported, learning is a must because you learn from the mistakes that has happened during the project. You learn from the learning outcomes, and I would call it as an LO or PLO, that is project learning outcomes. And that is useful for uh, you know, future implementation in future projects and learn also during, you know, sometimes during the, you know, the ongoing process also while the reporting is going on throughout the, uh, you know, throughout, throughout all the phases of the project, uh, you also learn from your mistakes and also you learn what has actually beneficial, has, has benefited you or the, you know, the project during the entire process. We are wasting time since we have already, like, you know, there were certain technical problems, so we'll directly go to our slides now. So there are two concepts basically that you will be learning today. One would be, of course, the learning component when you integrate it with uh, monitoring and evaluation, you could uh, call it in the abbreviated form as MERL, M-E-R-L, abbreviated, that is monitoring, evaluation, reporting, and learning. You could also call it as MEAL, M-E-A-L, abbreviated, monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning. Some prefer to call it as MEL, M-E-L, that is monitoring, evaluation and learning. So you can write it down, M-E-R-L, M-E-L, M-E-A-L, MEL. So MEL, as you understand, is monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning. I'm repeating, monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning. MEL, it just talks about monitoring, evaluation, learning. However, reporting is you know, a part of MEL as well, but they have just not included the, you know, the, the alphabet there, but you could, you know, you could choose to call it as MEL, M-E-R-L or M-E-A-L. M-E-A-L, which is not here, of course, is monitoring, evaluation, accountability, and learning. So monitoring and evaluation, as you know, is an important part of the process. There is also analysis and accountability, which is part of the process. It is reported. So again, it is part of the process. And now learning is a final component of monitoring and evaluating the project. That is the learning from the reported outcomes. Now the implications and inferences are drawn and they're further executed. So this is also, of course, as I said earlier, can be referred to as MERL, MERL, that is monitoring, evaluation, reporting, and learning. Data from comprehensive evaluation, project specific or impact evaluation is reported, and that must also include the cost benefit analysis, CBA, and cost efficient analysis, CE, of the project, as well as the other programmatic. Uh, inferences. I'm repeating, the final component of monitoring and evaluation project is the learning component. The learning component from the reported outcomes, they learn the implications from the implications and the inferences or the conclusions are drawn based on the reporting of monitoring and evaluation and also that they were accountable, the accountability also is reported there. And all these components, though are, you know, independent components, they are also interdependent components. I'm repeating all the components of monitoring and evaluation, though they are independent components individually, but they're also interdependent components. That's what we have learned throughout the uh, process. What has we learned the process in, in the past classes? We have learned, we have seen how it is independent, yes, 
yet it is interdependent and there is a need for integrating all of it together, the processes together to come with a particular learning outcome. So the final outcome of monitoring and evaluating the project is learning from reported outcomes. It could be you know, abbreviated and called as MERL, MERL, Monitoring Evaluation Reporting and Learning. It can also be called as MEAL, M-E-A-L, uh, uh, Monitoring, Evaluation, Accountability and Analysis and Learning, M-E-A-L, A for Accountability and Analysis and learning accountability is basically the commitment factor where uh, you know the person is accountable and is committed to respond also to the stakeholders the project team you know is accountable for the implementation for proper implementation of the project and they are answerable uh, to the stakeholders and the employer of the project so that's why there is you could also call it as meal m-e-a-l so this also mal as a whole uh, during the reporting process it also includes the factor of cost benefit analysis cba and cost efficient analysis that is cea of the project as well as programmatic inferences now learning what does learning mean it refers to the efforts made by the project management team to examine the reports generated during the project, identify the mistakes, see what resolutions they have given uh, to the project and the factors that led to the final launching and final delivery of the project. Now, at this juncture, the need to strategize a mechanism to disseminate reported information about learning comes to the fore. Disseminate, in a sense, sharing information uh, about what they have learned in the project process comes to the fore. Now, a prudent project head or project manager, as the case may be, will have to prag pragmatically devise a strategic module. He has to use a particular strategy, a strategic module for sharing the information asserting or that is derived from the MERL process, that is uh, monitoring evaluation uh, reporting or mo monitoring evaluation accountability and analysis reporting and learning with the project team and relevant contributors and beneficiaries of the project. So the information that, that is derived from or ascertained from MERL, monitoring, evaluation, reporting, and learning from a project serves as a precursor for project experiential learning and enhancing the experiential knowledge from a project. And we can call it as project learning outcome. See, I'm repeating here, you can call it as MEAL, you can use all this, uh, I mean, I want you to know all these abbreviations uh, throughout the process in monitoring and evaluation, learning is an important uh, component. But in the process, we have monitoring, evaluation, accountability and an ana uh, analysis, reporting, and learning, or you could call it as just monitoring, evaluation, and learning. In monitoring, evaluation, and learning, you have monitoring, evaluation, then uh, reporting, accountability, and analysis, and learning. So the information that is ascertained through the processes which were independent, but yet they were interdependent during the project implementation uh, process, the information that is ascertained from this MERL, M-E-R-L, monitoring, evaluation, reporting, and learning from the project, it serves as a precursor or as a, as a fundamental step forward towards project experiential learning and enhancing the experiential knowledge from the pro from the project and for this we could call it as project learning outcome plo so it is advised that a strategic module for dissemination of what we call, can call it as project learning outcome plo may be devised which may take its shape in the form of you know convening meetings or even in the form of additional learning techniques via articles and project magazines etc which may be distributed to the concern so we, we can propose here different approaches that may be adopted by project companies or project leads for disseminating plo what is plo project learning outcome why is there a need to disseminate or share information? Why is there a need? Why? Basic two needs are 
One is, of course, the ongoing process of launching the project. You learn what were the, you know, the the lacuna, what was the lacunae, what was the the loopholes during the implementation of the project, and how those loopholes were sealed. What were the weaknesses during the project, and how the weaknesses were met. What were the problems, and how what was the resolutions that was provided there. And also, uh, you have learned. Uh, the, I mean, the team learns during the process of. Uh, you know, during the implementation process, they learn also the, the the good part of it. So there is a good part of it and there is bad part of it. It's not always good. It's not always bad. It's, there's always some good part of it, there's some good part, a bad part of it. And you, during the process, you learn the, the strengths and weaknesses of implementation of a particular project. So what are the different approaches? So the 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 learning outcomes needs to be disseminated or shared first of all they would share it with the group the project team itself they would hold a meeting convene a meeting and share it with the project group the next part of it they would share it with the stakeholders the next part of it they would report it they would put it probably in the magazine or an internal uh, you know a project company magazine or also in you know certain uh, professional magazines and just talk about certain case studies that took place between two uh, between an employer in a project and between the other contractors like a case study they would just put it in any magazine so that is another mode of disseminating information they could hold even conferences they could hold seminars the purpose of uh, you know disseminating or sharing information of, of course is for further learning and to set a kind of a precedent for future projects and also, you know, to enhance the learning process, not just of the project team, but also for all those in the industry. So at the micro level within the, you could say that learning is for the, within the project team, and that could happen by convening a PLO, a PLO meeting, project learning outcome meeting. Next could be uh, just as a reiteration of the explanation that I gave earlier as for the slide here, it says, organize seminars and workshops within the organization and over inviting prospective project employers. That is, if a person anticipates that there is, or if a project company anticipates that there can be for the projects that, that are coming up, so they would strategize uh, in the way of attracting, you know, certain investors or certain employers just to, you know, propel themselves in the market saying that we all have already launched a successful project here so uh, they would like you no know, whole uh, organize a seminar or a workshop it could be within the organization also by inviting prospective project employers funders investors market leaders and so on next is publish in-house project magazines with re with relevant references to projects handled by the company. Next is again, make the reports available to the content writers. So this is another, uh, you know, approach that could be used for disseminating information that you hire the services of content writers who can help to prepare case studies in the form of success stories. And these case studies either may be disseminated or uh, you know, published probably even on on the website or even the other social uh, you know forums, and also it is useful for you know for documenting it and also for educational purposes. Now you share the highlights of PLO to the IT team at times and external affairs concern team to post these highlights on the company's official social media pages such as Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. Of course, the traditional approach again reiterating is of posting the project achievement highlights on the company's web page. So the approaches of disseminating PLO project learning outcomes is, of course, at the micro level as well as at the macro level. The purpose of learning is, of course, the purpose is to learn from the, the mistakes of the project. The, the project team learns it. The, the, the project company learns it. Uh, depending upon what it is, what type of project, the, the, the employer, the stakeholders also, it lays a precedent for them. It also helps to launch this project company into the market. It also has, serves as an educational tool for students and when it is documented and case studies are published in different uh, you know, project magazines, professional project magazines and so on. Next is incorporating merle of the previous project in new project 
proposal. So it is ideal that MERL, MERL, Monitoring, Evaluation, Reporting, and Learning is incorporated in prospective project proposals. Or you could also say that it is ideal that MEAL, M-E-A-L, MEAL, is incorporated in prospective project proposals, in future project proposals, and the key project learning outcomes, that is key KPLO, it needs to be highlighted along with the overall PLO. So this will attract the attention of project employers and funders to award the project and invest in the project as a case may be, depending on the type of the project, which will help them gauge the success of the model project and this also encourages them to scale up their contribution to the project now th these are very short chapters and this is just understood like the learning is a very important part of it so what is the significance let's move on to the last chapter the conclusive chapter that is the significance of merle or meal plo and kplo what are what is the importance of it Next is, uh, uh, a well-documented and well-drafted model is a key to enhancing the prospects of any company in terms of being awarded new projects or getting investors aboard, setting a pattern for the project team, building the goodwill of the project company and aiding future study. So the inferences that are drawn, the conclusions that are drawn as object lessons in the form of PLO and KPLO derived from MERL and MEL or MEAL, M-E-A-L, may be both good and bad or either good and bad. And the factors reportedly learned can now be used for further projects. I'll ask you questions on this again. Pay attention. So again, the significance or the importance of MERL, or why do they collect learning outcomes? Or why is KPLO or PLO, why is it drawn from a fine or a good MERL or meal? So, the, so that it, you know, it aids in future projects of a similar kind. The lessons learned in the last project must be borne in mind and the new project proposals may be prepared for the new upcom upcoming or prospective projects. So KPLO and PLOs drawn from a fine MERL or MEAL, M-E-A-L, shall replicate the cost benefit cost benefit analysis inference as well as cost efficient analysis inferences then documented reports of project processes or practices serve as a base for kplo and plo and they act as a forerunner of you know for future projects further it also helps to maintain a tab on quality assurance protocols and implement successful quality assurance protocols or enhanced quality assurance protocols based on more now, there is a need always for strategic meal or strategic meal. Now, a strategic meal should reflect the usage of even MRS, Management Information System, as an organized repository of data with key numeric information on the project plan, an MNE, and analysis, and that may even be your reference to appropriate project sites. I mean, they could give, you know, the mapping references to appropriate, uh, you know, project sites as part of the comprehensive reporting and learning plan. So as advised also in the previous chapter, 
uh, as we just discussed some time back, that is incorporating KPLO and PLO derived from MERL of recent projects in prospective or future project proposals will attract the attention of project employers and funders or investors to avoid the project and invest in the project as the case may be depending upon, of course, the type of the project, which will serve as a plumb line tool to gauge the success of the model project, which encourages them to scale up their contribution to the project. So thus we can say that KPLO and PLO extracted from MERL is a plumb line tool to gauge the success of previous projects and a portion of successful accomplishment of future projects. So today we have learned about the final component that is a learning uh, component, the learning outcome from a project. So therefore, now how can you conclude it? Can anyone conclude it for me? Yeah, can you tell what we learned during this class? Can someone just recapitulate? Yeah, let me try. Please, go ahead. Yeah, we have learned the importance of uh, learning and uh, it is used as a accountability and uh, correction of uh, the past events or uh, uh, the past, uh, the, the challenges encountered. At the same time, this can be corrected through meeting, organizing seminars, workshops with the project learning outcome, at the same time with the stakeholders. Uh, more so, uh, this can be published in the uh, websites of the uh, of the company or of the organization, in order to uh, 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 in order to become a reference for future. Uh, at the same time, we have learned uh, that uh, uh, even it can be shared through the social media like uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. So I will leave the rest to my colleagues. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you so much. And it was a very good attempt. And I feel you have recapitulated well. And you're well put in your own words. Now, can someone do it for me again? OK, hello. OK, I can add more something. This is Osman. Yes, Osman, go ahead. It has an interchange. Mill and uh, mill and PLO uh, and uh, KPLO, those words are literally interchanging and they have similar meaning, but has different approaches. Also, we have learned in here is a tracking process of the program when doing adjustments, uh, how to do adjustments during the program, assessing the outcome of the project and uh, that are equal challenging of the information. And the, these all can foster change in the organization is even in the system or the whole system. That's over to you. Yes, over to you. Hello. Hello, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, Loud yeah. And Yes, okay, okay. So, okay, we were talking about monitoring, evaluation, reporting, accountability, and learning. We can also discuss it in certain phases. Okay, the meal program, I think I'll just uh, add another, uh, you know, a little bit more to this to the meal program, so that you can just write it down meal program, M E A L the meal program and I have given you the full form of meal. So you can also talk about the entire meal program, 
or even Merle. So I'll uh, I'll prefer to use the the you know the abbreviated form of meal so that it's easy for you to remember the meal program in five phases. If you if you recollect the last classes that we learned, you can come uh, you can you, know, you can easily. Uh, draw certain uh, inferences and come to certain conclusive phases that meal uh, you know attracts one is of course you design certain you know logic models so as to you know map the project as he said uh, as osman said he spoke about tracking so you design logic models for what for tracking the project life of uh, project implementation then uh, you could also speak about you know planning for this entire process. You remember we spoke about project planning, so planning for the entire process. Next is, of course, you collect data for the purpose of reporting and you know meeting information needs. Then you analyze data and you use data. So therefore, in this entire part of it, you see that M-E-A-L-O, you know, monitoring and evaluation, the techniques that are used, each of it may be, you know, uh, uh, it may be uh, independent, you see, it may be independent, but of course, if you can conclude that it is also interdependent. Suppose a question comes to you for exam uh, that monitoring and evaluation has different tools in it and they go through different phases and all of it is uh, independent and also interdependent. So what would be your answer? Yeah, what would be your answer? Come again, please, pardon. If, if for the exams, a question comes to you saying that monitoring and evaluation encompasses several phases and tools and the entire process is independent in nature as well as interdependent. Comment. So what's your answer to that? Of course, it's a you know a long answer which would come probably for twenty marks, probably so. But what would be just if you could just give me the gist of it, just in one or two lines? It's the same thing. Whatever you told me, you could you should speak here about what is monitoring, just to you know substantiate the answer. For exams, you should tell me what is monitoring, what is evaluation. There are different phases, and you know, of monitoring. Uh, monitoring goes through, and or during the different phases of the project, monitoring and evaluation is done. What is monitoring? What is evaluation? What are the different steps in the process? There are different uh, processes involved there. That is monitoring, evaluation, reporting. When they evaluate, of course they report it as well. So reporting this report for what it is done for accountability and for you know, an analyzing the reported data for what? For understanding the learning outcomes. It could, you could say that for understanding the meal or for designing a proper meal, you know, uh, monitoring, evaluation, um, you know, uh, reporting, uh, analyzing the data as well as the learning outcomes uh, you know there are different phases there each components and all the components are uh, independent in nature but but yet they are interdependent because there is a need for good monitoring for the purpose of evaluation and this evaluated data is you know, uh, reported and this reported data has to be analyzed and this analysis for the purpose of accountability to stakeholders, beneficiaries, investors of the project. And you also include for designing a good mall or a good meal program, you include even the stakeholders, the investors, so as to draw even ideas from them. For what? For learning the outcomes, for learning the outcomes, or as we have abbreviated here, LO or PLO, project learning outcomes, project specific learning outcomes or learning outcomes. The answer is, just the same, okay? Are you understand me? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's thus we can conclude that monitoring and evaluation is an important tool for project management, 
for the purpose of understanding the learning outcomes and for what? For future implementation also for you know, correcting the problems that might occur during the implementation, during the ongoing process of the project, as well as for designing future projects or chartering future projects. So that's all. So do you have any questions? Okay, before that, um, uh, I've already um, put up the syllabus for your final exams. Assignments are a must. And of course, you know that attendance carries marks. So you can uh, somehow calculate the marks that you are expecting for your, you know, for the overall part of the paper. Like, you know, how many classes you've attended. So accordingly, you, you know that how much uh, marks you would get for attendance, which is already, uh, you know, incorporated there in your course description. Just go through that and check like what are the, you know, how the marks are distributed for, you know, assessment uh, for attendance, as well as the internal assessments in the form of assignments, as well as for final exams. Now, the question paper pattern, of course, would be 20 marks, uh, you know, and there would be a choice, you know, a long question, or you will have to write elaborately for 20 marks, any question that would be given to you, and you will have a choice there, it will be just uh, just one choice. So, for example, it's question number one, uh, what is dash 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 and whatever, or comment on, uh, you know, dash dash dash. And next would be a short note. Again, that would be for around five marks. So this is how you, and even the short notes have, uh, uh, you know, choice as well. So it's, it would be 20 marks, uh, long, long answers or elaborate answers and five marks for short notes. So the syllabus for the finals is also put up there. Uh, so certain important questions that I can tell you, of course, I've already given you one important question. I said comment on whatever. Then a question can come on the phases of monitoring, the tools of evaluation. Again, that's an important question. Tools for evaluating a project, then monitoring of a project, uh, the different phases that are involved, the significance and the purpose, the role of a project manager. So these are some important questions for you. And uh, short notes on MERL or MEAL. So if a MERL or MEAL, whatever, you will have to give me the entire abbreviated form. What is monitoring? What is evaluation? What is reporting? And what is uh, learning? The learning outcomes, KPLO and all that. And what is MEAL? Again, the same thing. You know, even if MOL and MEAL comes together, you'll have to mention of about MEAL as well in MOL because, it, you know, it is just that differently abbreviated and differently worded, but ultimately the entire process, you know, it culminates to, uh, uh, you know, to efficient uh, launching of the project and learning from the outcomes. It just you know culminates into that and how you disseminate information what what you're learning you disseminate information at a micro level that is within the project team within the project company and for that you might also include the stakeholders and at a macro level where you document it and you hold sometimes even conferences seminars having other project companies other employers investors uh, you know, employees of projects, I mean, other investors, and you have hold a conference and, uh, you know, you talk about the weaknesses of the project launch and also how you overcame the weaknesses and also the, the how the project, what made the project easy to be launched and, and so on. So the good part of it and the bad part of it. And you could also, like, you know, it would be documented even for educational purposes in, you know, it's, it's always there in textbooks in you know, professional project magazines and so on. So ultimately is uh, monitoring and evaluation is for the purpose of understanding the launching process of the project, learning from the, the, the weaknesses and the strengths, you know, proper project implementation and proper delivery, timely delivery, and you know, within the project goals, whatever is a goal, that is one purpose. And the next purpose is, of course, the learning. So the final component is learning and learning you report it like for the purpose of dissemination of information to all the concerned parties and also to, for example, say the students of project of project management. So this is it. You have any questions? And yeah, yet another thing is a student asked me about, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, he was finding it difficult to um, upload his assignment online 
uh, that is in the Google Classroom. So that's mandatory because uh, that serves as a, a record. So try your best. And in case you're having any problem, get in touch with the IT department of uh, your university and ask them to help you out or even you. I mean, you guys can help each other as a, you know, as friends or students. Just help each other, like on the on the mode of really, uh, you know, how to do the things of or how to upload your assignments. Just in case you're having these technical issues, or even please go ahead and even contact the IT department. But sending me by WhatsApp or even by mail. Uh, will not do any good the reason is uh you know when it is uploaded on google classroom it's a record even for the university you have any other questions yeah are you attendance abdullah yado osman muhammad uh Osman Abdi Mohammed and uh, Mohammed Bashir Abdullahi. Okay. Any questions you have? There's yeah. no question. No question. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, did you find any part of the chap uh, chapters during the entire ME? M and A, uh, M and E uh, classes. Uh, did you find anything difficult in understanding? We can do it now. No, there's not difficult. It's not difficult. So basically, the idea of this class was to simplify the entire subject, and I tried my best to simplify it and encapsulate it, and you know, put it in the the most perspicuous manner in a most simplified and I pulverize the concept so that you would really understand it. Um, okay, so since you understood it, so that means I would expect better performance. And uh, all the best for your exams. If you have any questions at any time, of course, you can get in touch with me. Um, I think tentatively your exam, of course, should be somewhere in July, probably the first week, but still for that, you have to get in touch with the university, the concerned department will be able to divulge that information to you. Is there anything else that you want to ask me before we leave? Uh, yeah. The, okay, and so we are, how many, just is reminded now, we are in unit eight, I hope so. How many? Uh, how many? Um, how many? Yeah. How many units are our job tasks remained at this moment? Uh, yeah, I think we are in unit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. We have completed the syllabus. Yeah, Osman, we have completed the syllabus. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yes. So there are just eight units. Whatever I have posted uh, for the syllabus for the exam, that is it. So I tried my best to, you know, to simplify the subject, practically speaking, and not just uh, deliver it to you. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, at what time are we planning to have an exam? Yeah, exam tentatively, of course, it should be somewhere in the first week of July, but I'm not sure about the exact date because that's up to the university to decide and let you know. So what you can do is you can get in touch with the concerned department, the exams department and ask them for, you know, you know, for all the details on that. And I remember you had a, a class before this before me right, so you learned two chapters there as well. But I have reiterated those chapters for you, chapter one and two. Um, uh, you can use the points even uh, from what the other uh, lecturer has taught you, and you can merge it. Uh, and you know, you can write comprehensive answers for your exams uh, in chapter one and chapter two. Because I try to, uh, you know, restrict myself to you know three to eight. However, even chapter one and two, I remember for the first class, I tried to you know give you uh, you know try to uh, you know um, give it to you in a just form and uh, you know deliver it to you 
but you'll have to remember the points even what the other lecturer taught you and then probably you can integrate that uh, material as well to your answers for the first and the second chapter okay okay 